So there I was. I had achieved everything I had wanted and then some. I was at the top of my game. But instead of feeling fantastic, ready to take on bigger challenges, achieve even more, I felt empty, uninspired, and depressed. I couldn't get motivated to do anything. Even the simplest tasks all of a sudden seemed more trouble than they were worth. I found myself going through the motions of my own life. I had never experienced anything like this before in my life, so I set out to figure out what's wrong with me and more importantly, what did I need to do to fix it? But nothing I tr tried seemed to work. It was like a doctor heal thyself moment. I could solve almost any business problem for my clients, but I couldn't figure out how to fix myself. Then one day, while I was digging through one of my old journals, I came across an exercise I had done a number of years ago. It was called a life wheel. The object of the exercise was to examine your life and rate yourself in all the different life categories. So I thought, what the heck, let's try this again. And I went back through the wheel. And on a scale of one to 10, I gave myself a nine in finance, a nine on romance and love, an eight on my social life, a 10 on career and business, a nine in my health, a nine on family, and in growth and development, being the lifelong learner that I am, I gave myself a 10. All great scores. But I thought to myself, am I lying to myself? I mean, I really just couldn't see how I could feel the way I was feeling if my life wheel was true. So I decided to look at the wheel from a different perspective. Rather than focus on my scores, I decided to take a look at the criteria I used to grade myself. I decided to answer the question, why did I give myself the scores that I had given myself? So I flipped the page in my journal and I started writing. I gave myself a 10 on career and business because I had built a business where I made more money than I ever thought I'd make or that I needed, and I had zero day-to-day -day responsibilities. I gave myself a 9 on romance and love because everything seemed okay in my marriage. We never argued, and I could come and go as I pleased. I gave myself a 9 on my family because my two daughters were, they were doing well in school, there weren't any crises, everything seemed okay. And as I continued, that's when it dawned on me. Actually, it was like it hit me in the back of my head with a two by four. I was defining all my success as the absences of problems, challenges, and drama. But was that what I really aspired to? So instead, I thought about what my ideal goals would really be. I thought back to when I used to dream about anything being possible, back when I didn't think about limits. And I decided to write down that dream criteria. So now, for work and career, I wrote that a 10 would be if I was fully engaged and passionate about what I was doing daily, that I felt totally connected to my team, my clients, and my marketplace, and that I felt certain I was doing the work that I was put on this planet to do to make the difference that I was here to make. For love and romance, I decided that a 10 would be a passionate relationship where we shared a deep connection with true vulnerability, where we met each other's needs both emotionally and intellectually, and we experienced deep intimacy and, of course, great sex. And for family, I wrote a 10 would be if my daughters truly felt like I was their champion, that every time when we were together, I was totally present and deeply connected to them and that they felt they could tell me anything. After I finished up coming up with a 10 in each area, I went back and now regretted the areas of my life once again. And you can probably guess my scores were much different. And now they made more sense. In career and business, I went from a 10 to a four. Romance and love went from a 9 to a 3. And family went from a 9 to a 5. Every score in every area of my life plummeted. And while it was scary to see, it was also enlightening. Because it was now clear for the first time what had happened to me. And more importantly, what I needed to do. And who I needed to be if I wanted a more fulfilling life. I now had new criteria to make decisions. And many of these new decisions were challenging. They were difficult. They were even scary. And I sometimes I had to experience more pain before things could really improve. But every time I made one of those tough decisions and I moved closer to what I really wanted, I felt more alive. And that's why I gave you that PDF yesterday. Because before you can really move towards mastery in your business and in your life, you need to know what that looks like for you. So you can make the difficult short-term decisions that will ultimately get you to where you want to be. Now, if you really do this exercise honestly and you really think through what a 10 in every area of your life would be, you'll probably recognize that who you are today is not the person you'll need to be to take the actions you'll need to take to have the life that you want to have. In other words, you need a transformation. And that's exactly what my workshop next month is designed to do for you. 
To learn all about the workshop and how it will help you transform into the person you need to be, just click on the link where my transformation begins. And tomorrow, I will share with you a new distinction about who you are now versus who you need to be and what will help cause that transformation in your life. So until tomorrow, to higher profits and beyond, Chef Renown.